Fairness Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings. I hope and trust I find you well. We have one more experience as we consider experiences from the mountaintop. Come with me to the book of Exodus. We are at chapter 24. We want to look at just verse 12. It reads as follows in the King James Version. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount, and be there, and I will give thee tables of stone, and a law, and commandments, which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word as we spend a moment in prayer. Come join Mr. MK as we pray. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege of being called up into the mountaintop, and above all, the privilege of learning that which you have written with your own finger. How we pray, dear Father, that as the week starts, we may start with you and even appreciate lessons that will affect our working space. This has been our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask, Amen. My dear friends, just allow me to raise as usual five points to carry you from Monday to Friday. This is what we find the Lord saying unto Moses. He says unto Moses, come up to me into the mount. You know, I love the way God speaks to Moses and I want to draw certain lessons for our workspace. When we went to work for the first time, we were given an offer. We were given an address where to report and we went there and we reported for duty. God is saying to Moses, come up, come up. Be there, be present, be present physically and mentally at the place I have a portion for you. I hope and pray that some of us, as we take off to work, we are going to be present. Be there, be at work, be counted. Do not just be a statistic, but contribute. Do not just be a statistic, but be visible. Do not just be a statistic, but add value. Be there. Some of us, we are not there. We are not there. And God is saying, come up and be there. Your employer is also saying this morning, please, I hope you will come up and be there for the week. At point number two, God then says to Moses, this is what I'm going to do. I will give you the following things. And A, at point number two, tables of stone. Moses is being given tables of stone. What does it mean to receive these tables of stone? They are a work of art. Not only are they a work of art, they are also permanent tables of stone. Of course, Moses is yet to break these as we go further down the line. But these tables of stone give me an impression to share with you this morning. As you go to your workplace, make it a point that you're going to produce works of art. You're going to produce something that is worth giving over to a client, that is worth giving over to your supervisor, that is worth giving over to those who shall take up from you. What do you have to hand over? Those who go into the workspace must make it their prerogative to produce permanent documents, to produce permanent structures, to produce things that are going to outlive them. Are you ready to go out and be a child of God and be an exemplary person in the workspace? Make it a point, if this is your wish, to produce permanent works of art. For those who are interested in the modern term, it is called intellectual property. Produce IP, intellectual property, and this will set you apart. Point number three. God then says to Moses, this is what I'm also going to give you a law and commandments. Before I go into the lesson, for those of us who are going into the workspace, allow me to delve a little deeper into the study of the word. God says, I will give you a law and commandments. Is there a distinction between the law and the commandments? Yes. Just bear with me. When Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, they were given one law. Of the tree that is in the center of the garden, Thou shalt not eat. The day you shall eat of it, you will surely die. One law was given. The children of Israel are now on Mount Sinai. At the foot of it, in chapter 20, they hear God speak. 
And he says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not even bow down to any graven image which is in the heavens or even beneath. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain. He goes on, thou shalt keep the Sabbath day holy. He goes on, thou shalt uh, obey your father and your mother. And he goes on, you will not steal. You will not commit adultery. And on and on and on. Time does not allow us. Now as God has articulated all these, why is God giving them this? These are 10 presets. These are 10 subunits. These are 10 uh, elements of the law. What is the law? The law is the character of God. What is the character of God? God is the one who gives the law. That's what makes the law. The God is the one who sets what should be done. That's what makes the law. Not what he has said, but who says it. That's where the authority is vested. So when God says, I will give you a law and the commandments. The law is to obey as thus saith the Lord. Regardless of what he has said, every time he says, we abide by the law when we obey as thus saith the Lord. So when you begin to say, these laws do not apply, what you're actually saying, you are not recognizing the one who gives the law. In the context of Zimbabwe, the, the, the constitution says the legislature, which is, is inclusive of the president and the parliament, they are the ones who make the law, they promulgate the laws. So all the ex and statutory instruments that you find, they point to an authority that vests in the president and in the parliament. The Ten Commandments of themselves, they are not the law. They point to a God who makes the law, just like parliament. So when we go through the Ten Commandments and we abide by them, we do not obey the Ten Commandments. We obey the God who has given the Ten Commandments. Now, as you go into the workspace, having given this background, take note, when you are there, there are codes of conduct. They are set by your employer for you to abide by them. To abide by the Ten Commandments is to recognize that you have a superior. To abide by the um, codes of conduct is to recognize that you have a superior in the workspace. And point number four. Notice God now makes it clear. I have written these 10 commandments with my own hands. They are given of God. He is the author. Whosoever will then seek to change them must first of all write them. If you have not written them, you will not change them. Even in the workspace, that which has been given by the employer is not yours to change. It is yours to apply to. It is yours to, to, to apply and even uh, comply with. Point number five, as we near the end, time does not allow. I wish we could have said more. At point number five, notice God now gives Moses a job description. Moses, having appeared at the workspace, this is what you will do. You are going to go and teach them. Go and teach them. Even in the workspace, if you are a superior, I hope your subordinates have clear job descriptions. They have clear key performance indicators and performance areas. God leads by example and he says, Moses, I have called you to be a teacher of the law. If you are going to go out into the workplace, go back and consider your job description. What is your key performance indicator? Have you taught them and teach them well? May the good Lord be with us and may the good Lord remind us what our prerogative is to go out and teach that we have received. The works of art that have come from the hand of God are ours to apply, they are ours to comply with, and they are ours to pass on to our colleagues, subordinates, and even to our families. Until we meet again on Friday, may the good Lord keep you, bless you, and prosper you. Blessings and peace be upon you.